Good evening, everyone, and welcome to worship once again on this Wednesday night. We're glad that you're here with us, and we're very thankful for Mary Herring, who will be sharing her faith with us here in just a few moments. But before we begin, I want to uh, just remind you of a few things that are upcoming in the congregation. And uh, first and foremost is the racism uh, book study that's going on right now on Wednesday nights from six to seven. And it's through Zoom. If you'd like to, you, you can always join in if, if you'd like to do that and you haven't done so yet, just contact the church office and we'll make sure that you have the connection in order to do that. Um, I want to remind you about the food drive that's coming up on the 25th and 26th. All the information is in the bulletin, or again, you can call the church office if you don't have access to a bulletin. Um, of course, we continue the prayer with the pastors every Thursday from 1.30 to 2.30, again via Zoom, and our devotions are offered every day uh, from one of the ministerial staff here at the church, uh, you just simply call the church phone number and you can hear uh, daily devotion. I wanna say thank you to all of you as I have in the past for your faithfulness and your generosity over these many weeks that um, we have continued to struggle with this virus and uh, tried to continue doing ministry in this place and in the community. And it is your faithfulness that has allowed that to happen. So thank you for, for your goodness and your faithfulness in all of that. Let's begin our time together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and truth. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. I'm going to be sharing with you portions of Psalm 18, again from the message by Eugene Peterson, um, which is a paraphrase of Scripture. Psalm 18. I love you, God. You make me strong. God is bedrock under my feet, the castle in which I live. My rescuing night. My God, the high crag where I run for dear life, hiding behind the boulders, safe in the granite hideout. I sing to God the praise lofty and find myself safe and saved. God made my life complete. When I placed all the pieces before him, when I got my act together, God gave me a fresh start. Now I'm alert to God's ways. I don't take God for granted. Every day I review the ways God works. I try not to miss a trick. I feel put back together and I'm watching my step. God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart to his eyes. Here ends the reading of the psalm. We continue now as Mary shares her faith. Thank you again, Mary, for doing this. I'm Mary Herring, and I'm in today to kind of do a faith talk. And you know, when Pastor David called and asked me to do this faith talk, my first thought was, you've got to be kidding me, and the second one was no at all, not at all. It's funny, but not long before that, I had been talking to Carolyn and Jan how much I admired all these people that were doing their faith talks and how there wasn't a chance in the world that I would do it. But you see, there was one caveat to him calling. He said I had to pray before I answered him which I wasn't sure was fair. That, you see, makes a great big difference to me. My prayers for the past many years have been to my Heavenly Father to please lead me where He wants me to go. I'm really good at talking to complete strangers, but 
put me on my feet and expect me to be conscientious and clear, I'm not so good. But the next funny thing is my devotions this morning was Psalms 56, 3. And it said, when I am afraid, I put my trust in you. Well, do you think it was a message? I took it as one. I never saw my faith journey as being an inspiration to anyone. I do know, and I say often, I have a strong faith. I know that there is a God above, and that he leads me, he takes care of me, and in his way, in his own timing, he answers my prayer. I've also learned that when I make plans, he laughs. Mary, that's not even close to what I have in line for you. My story is very different from most. I guess really everyone's is. My faith has been tested and influenced by many, many cultures, as well as very many religions. As we've heard from previous speakers, I was raised with going to church every Sunday, worshiping, attending Sunday school and youth fellowship, where that was just the normal. But this was in a very fundamental church with family, lily white neighbors, all with very similar thoughts, ideas, and backgrounds. I couldn't be baptized and a member of this congregation until I had decided to accept Christ into my heart and ask him to forgive my sins. This decision came sometime after my mom had died when I was 14 years old. Our minister had an altar call and I literally felt an overwhelming pull in my heart to answer. I remember that after prayers at the altar, a weight was lifted and I felt a peace that I hadn't felt in a while. I was baptized by immersion. It was in our local lake, and yes, I was dunked three times. I know I wanted to follow and serve our Creator. About that time, my dad managed to get the money together for me to go and attend church camp. Note, this was the only time I'd ever gotten that opportunity, this on the heels of my mom's death, and also the first time I'd ever been away from home on my own. You see, now I look back and believe that this was maybe God's hand. I met a young black man from Africa, and he talked about the very few of his area, his people in his area, that had even ever heard of Jesus, and that he had learned from all the missionaries that had been there. <laughs> I learned from him an awful lot, but I also remember him saying he had worn a loincloth till he was fairly old. I'm not sure I even knew at that time what a loincloth was. Remember, my area was all white, and this was the first time I'd ever had the honor of meeting someone from another country and learning about another culture. God opened my heart to see I could learn from everyone that he chose to put in my path. It seems strange to think other people thought of God in a different way than I did. He saw God as black, speaking his own language, and his church was outside, always. But he still loved his God. Fast forward three years and I married Frank, a professional army guy. I want to stress that this was in 1959 in Fort Benning, which is in Georgia. Still a South that was steeped with ways of looking at the black movement and very different, the black movement very differently and than I'd ever thought of. My first chaplain was a black pastor and the first Sunday I went into the vestibule, there was a picture of Jesus knocking on the garden gate, but it was a picture of a black Jesus. Again, God says, we're created in his image. My eyes were opened again, God teaching me that he loves and walks with each one of us, even those different from us. God again answered my prayers in a profound way when we were in France. I lost a baby at five months and Frank was TDY, which is temporary duty travel. He was only home on weekends. This, with us living in a very small village with only three American families, 
no phones, and at that time I had an almost year old son. I prayed scared, heart-wrenching prayers. Yes, Frank came home on Wednesday. He was just picking up a part, he thought. He took me to the hospital, and yeah, one more time, proven God answers prayers. One of our chaplains was a Quaker, and he taught me that you can look at our Bible from a different point of view, not changing it, but a total different mindset. He was more passive and full of forgiveness, and he was so full of love. His tolerance for his brothers and sisters in Christ was almost palatable. Yet he was a very strong human being, very much of that strength in his Christ. When Frank was in Vietnam, I will say I questioned God many times over. The whys, wheres, hows were so strong, the anger at my own country's people was so real at times that I could almost taste it. I stayed in church many, many Sundays because of our children not because I wanted to be there. But yet, when I go, I would find that it touched my heart and I walked out in peace. I see many prayers were also answered at that time. Looking back, I'm not sure I saw them all at the time. After retiring, we again lived down south in Alabama. For a few years, I attended a Methodist church and I watched prayer change a community in bringing a Thanksgiving service together to include a black church. Our women's group had been part of organizing that service. Somewhere along the line, I realized that the black church had never attended, and I asked why. They had never been invited. We prayed and our leaders reached out to all our local churches, and I will say just maybe that music was a little different that year. We decided to go full-time RV, and we attended many services held in our campgrounds by retired ministers from many, many faiths. I know without question that we should have faith based on love, that we should serve our God from faith and love not obligation. I came to live with my daughter and son-in-law. I have attended services with them throughout the years, and I've listened to their beliefs and their thinking. I thought I would look and see if I could embrace their Lutheran beliefs as mine. It's the first time I had moved my membership from my home church. The belief of God's given grace has brought both a joy and a peace to my soul. My teaching was always more of doing work within the Old Testament law, to be given grace and to be God's hands on earth from love without the fear attached gives me a wonderful peace also. Being God's hands is giving hugs to the lonely, listening to those in need of an ear, and just giving a smile as you walk some, by someone um, in place, living what God has put me here to do. This kid from a dirt farm with most of my education from the School of Hard Knocks, but yet who God has seen fit to give a blessed, beautiful, love-filled life. And I've learned that maybe my purpose is to just show that love, kindness, joy, and peace to all those around me. And just maybe that's my full life's testimony. Along with this, I have to say that also at this time, we need to encourage each and every child of God to reach out to our brothers and sisters that don't look like us, that don't think like us, that don't live like us, that don't worship like us, and to know that with love, we can still find God in each and every one of those around us. Thank you, Pastor David because now, at the end of what I have done, I believe with all my heart that God one more time has taught me something, this time about myself. Have a blessed week.
Thank you, Mary. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that your holy word, which has been proclaimed this day, may enter into our hearts through your grace, that it may produce in us the fruit of the Spirit, for witness and service in the world, and to the praise and honor of your name. And we pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now, dear people of God, wherever you are, lift up your hearts and lift up your heads unto the Lord and receive his blessing for you. May the Lord now bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's people the gift of peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Mm -hmm.